objects, but it does give you the ability to imagine that sound actually levitates. Sound creates hurricanes. The guys, two guys in 2003 that lodged a patent to create hurricanes out of sound, believe it or not. And I believe they were granted their patent to create hurricanes. And maybe this is how they create the weather for us, without us even realizing it. And this is where we start getting into the real understanding of some of the masters. And no matter how I look at it, how much research I do, I keep coming back to one guy that stands head and shoulders above all other researchers and inventors of, I don't know, for how many centuries. And that guy's name is Nikola Tesla. He says, if you want to find out the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. It's exactly, that's exactly what I've been sharing with you here. Everything is sound and magneticism, and this is really important. So, <clears throat> what most people don't know is, remember, sound, God said, let there be light. So it's sound, moving sound, sound manifests as toroidal fields. Those to moving toroidal fields create magnetic fields, which are toroidal fields as well, and moving magnetic fields create electricity. That's the sequence of events. But what you, this tells us that because sound creates magnetic fields, it means everything must have a magnetic, uh, must be magnetic in some sort and in some sort of way. And if it's not, there's a very specific reason why it's not magnetic. So here's an example. You might not think of water as being magnetic, but it is. And so are graphite, aluminum, and glass. Aluminum is a good example of a paramagnet. And so is oxygen, which is attracted to magnets. Here, I have a few milliliters of liquid oxygen, which sticks to the magnet. I'll explain why later. Gadolinium oxide and cupric sulfate are good examples of paramagnetic substances. Cupric sulfate is a salt that can be picked up by a magnet. 